Kind of Shores is a small arts-based charity and the idea is that we used arts-based events to uh, raise awareness about the reality of lives of young people in care and of those who've been in care and the effect that it has on their adult lives. I was introduced to Paul by somebody in the care experience community who had seen his exhibition somewhere else and I immediately wanted to actually display his work somewhere. Um, and of course his poetry is really powerful so in this exhibition here we've managed to combine the two things together. I think it was important to have the virtual school actually involved as well because obviously that makes the link with young people in care today. Um, and the issues are very similar to those that Paul experienced when he was in care in the 60s. Um, some of those issues have not gone away and we've got the work from the virtual school here to make that link, which is really important. So we're looking to explore ways where we can really see and hear our young people and bring their voices to the fore. And art in all its forms is a way of doing that. And it's really important for us, in the words of the artist, to, to be the change and really facilitate ways in which our young people can communicate and be heard. It is important to, from our own experiences, to understand and learn, but it is critically important that we listen to the current experiences of young people, uh, young adults in care and leaving care. Uh, being looked after by the state is a really strange kind of concept. So the exhibition today, the discussion uh, around the exhibition, the care experience debate that we're going to have later in the programme is all about raising people's awareness of the needs, the issues that confront young people who are children of the state. My name's Debbie Gaze and I'm chair of the Corn Hall at DIS and I'm absolutely thrilled that we're able to host this exhibition and the subsequent art programmes. It's a very important subject, it's absolutely fascinating. It's an extraordinary exhibition. I'm really excited to hear the poetry and the music that's going to accompany it tonight. And obviously we've got Lady Dana coming today, which is brilliant and we're really thrilled that she's supporting it. This is the mayor of five. How very, very nice to meet you. It's lovely to meet you. Thank you so much, very much. Thank you so much. Hello. 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 Thank you so much. Hello. 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 I first met Paul Yusuf in 2017. He was the most extraordinary character. He was a gentle, kind and very talented man who, as Ian has just said, though had a very difficult childhood, he did not let it define him. He carried the pain of his childhood until he was able to release that pain and all the anger through writing. He then began to translate his words into the art that you see in the exhibition today. It was Paul's wish that we would all be the difference, not make a difference, but be the difference, which is a very personal statement about us all individually doing something. She's the one with bad behavior She's the one who wants to fight She's the one with the reputation She's the one who bites She's the one with all the bruises Tears in her eyes She's the one who talks the loudest Covers up with lies Hush now baby, I know you're frightened Hush now 
oh babe, I know you're scared Don't you know your daddy loves you? Don't you know? We all care So breathe in and out again So breathe in and out again It's familiar His voice called my name His arms lifting her to the sky once again But Daddy, you have left Another day, another year. Today was another bad day. I get a lot of these. People came, people went. They took a look through the fences. They didn't stay long, they never do. And I'm still here. Another day. A week. A month. Another year. But inside my pocket, I put my own scraps of paper, caught before the winds took them away. My words, my dreams, and I turned them over in my hand. Don't define me. I will choose who I want to be. Go on. Look at me. Look at me now. Dead. I had written previously would go anywhere near describing the impact of those marvellous um, performers, the music, the singing, the playing and the fantastic reading of the poetry. Not only that, but that extraordinary exhibition which I know would have touched us all here very, very deeply. It certainly did me. But always, the young people at the forefront of my objective. I sit down and listen to young boys in children's homes. I, I, I give them a voice, advocate for them. I speak up for them. I don't let anyone speak down about them. I speak to professionals. I've really made it my, my passion. I've decided this is, this is it now, until I die. I want to go out there and make a difference for these young people. Because if somebody didn't do that for me, I wouldn't be here now talking to you. I wouldn't have a beautiful wife and two beautiful children. That's all I ever wanted growing up, my own family. And even now when I talk to young kids, they say nobody cares about me, Chris. I say, I bloody care about you. You can have what I've got, it's not impossible. And it's holding people accountable. We might talk about this tonight about, we don't like the word corporate parenting, but it's everybody's responsibility to give these kids a chance in life. I, I thought what you said was incredibly powerful. I think it's heartbreaking to hear mm. that 30 years later things haven't changed the way they should have done. But I think that, I think what you said to us is a real call to arms about mm. really being passionate and working as hard as we can to, to change the narrative yes. and to change outcomes for young people and mm. to, to see them as people who have had a really difficult start. I really love the way you talked about love. That was particularly important mm. to me to hear and, and it's a theme all the way through the review. But it's critical. It's yeah. a state, a human state. We need love and we need yeah. to talk about that. And as professionals, we need to stop being afraid of that. I'm really passionate about this area. Mm. It is the Cinderella service yeah. um, of uh, care. 
Okay, every young person leaving care is an individual. They will have their own needs, they will have yeah. the points through the journey where they need different things. The care system does not treat them as individuals. It's, it's about, when we talk about love and safety and security and being able to achieve your potential, you have to have a home. You actually have yes. to have yes. somewhere to be. Whether that's yeah. because you're staying put in your foster care, and Sue, yes, you're right, there's been more and more success with those kind of schemes, but you actually, to feel loved and be loved and safe, you actually have to have that home, whether it's your own front door or, or one that you share with other people. You made, you made a valid point on that, and it was brilliant what you said, but what love is, you know, love is making a cup of cocoa. It doesn't have to be anything sensual or anything kind of yeah. intimate. Indeed. That's yeah. what love is, man. Yeah. It's like, you know, yeah. if you love your dog, you, you know, you stroke your dog, you take it for a walk. Mm -hmm. It was great what you said, actually. Okay. Uh, the bar is open for about another 45 minutes. Please take the time to stay around, chat, have conversations, talk about those things that this evening has registered and resonates with you. Uh, and if you want to, of course, uh, visit the exhibition again, to be reminded of what a remarkable adult who was a remarkable child. Thank you very much.